Buster Posey stepping aside, and a real pleasure to bring in Jeremy Affelt, a former teammate and a guy who won World Series championships with Buster Posey. Jeremy, thank you so much for the time. Really appreciate this, and appreciate you offering a few minutes to reflect on Buster Posey. What was your reaction to the news that at 34, he's coming off his best offensive season since 2014. He's had enough. What do you think? You know what? Uh, I, I, I text him a couple days ago, and I was like, is that your second you know, National League Comeback Player of the Year award? And he's like, yeah, I don't know if that's a good thing or a bad thing, you know? And uh, he said, but uh, he said, hey, man, I'm really thinking about retiring in the next few days, so just keep my family uh, in, in your thoughts and prayers. And I kind of knew he was kind of dabbling with this decision he was going to have to make all year. Uh, but, hey, when you know, when you, when you feel like it's over, it's over. And I know he had a career year. He had an unbelievable run. They had 107 wins. They unseated the Dodgers. There's a lot of things to say about going out on top. And I know that he won a world championship, but he's already got three. So uh, he's done what he has to do. He has no more room in his trophy house. Most of us have like a trophy case. That guy's got a trophy house. So uh, <laughs> he's done what he has to do. And, and uh, uh, I think he's a Hall of Famer, in my opinion. And he's one of the best men I've ever known, but definitely one of the best teammates and one of the best catchers I've, I've ever uh, had received for me. And so I'm very thankful for his career and to be a part of it was awesome. No question. I respect the fact he's got four young kids. He wants to spend time at home. He's done more than enough, although maybe that could be more work than actually playing baseball. But that remains to be seen um, as far yeah. as the memories that you had with him 2014. I mean, you were great because obviously you were critical in that even as a relief performance, the bridge to Bumgarner. What memories do you have from 2014 specifically? You know, I, I just remember his leadership was incredible in, in navigating. You know, he had to navigate a lot of things, but now game seven's a little different. None of us have been in any of those situations yet. You know, in 10 and four, in ten and 12, we didn't have a game seven. He had to navigate a situation where a starter came out in the second inning. We knew we were trying to get the ball to bum. He had an idea. I, I couldn't see real well. A lot of people don't know that, but I had an eye issue, and I was, I was actually pitching with blurry vision. Uh, and I was seeing two of Buster uh, when I was up there, and he knew it. He was like, I have no idea how to call pitches based on you not being able to see real well. And I just kind of depended on, you know, him to slow the game down and and, and me just to hopefully I could throw a strike. And uh, I, I, I'll tell you, he was awesome. And how he navigated the game, how he got to Bumgarner, how he navigated Bumgarner through knowing that it was a bullpen day for him and he had to get him through five innings. And he stayed calm the whole time. And, and, and that's one thing that everybody saw uh, as, a, as, a, as, a, as a pitcher for us. He was such a calming presence, even in the most intense situations like Game 7. He just never showed any kind of like anxiety or anxiousness or doubt. He was just a, such a strong leader. Uh, it, it was amazing. And to see how he navigated a pitching staff through a pretty intense uh, world championship, it, it, it meant a lot to us to have him behind that plate and to do what he did. He was incredible. All right, you just blew my mind. You're pitching in that game and you couldn't see? Are you kidding? So he's putting down a one and you think it's a two? How did you do this? Well, <clears throat> well, I had a water. I, I found out after the World Series, I had a water bubble on the middle of my pupil. So I was actually looking through a glass. And so it was, everything was like 3D. And so I was, I couldn't figure out I knew he was putting down one. I just couldn't figure out which catcher I was looking looking at. <laughs> and uh, uh, we didn't want to tell Bo we didn't want to tell Boach because we're like, Buster was like, "Hey, we're gonna have to tell Bochi." And I'm like, "You tell Bochi because you see that guy. I mean, Bochi's, you know, he's got two in. Like, You're gonna get that defibrillator out way earlier than you need to because he ain't gonna do real well right now in Game Seven if he finds out I got, I, I can't see. And he was just, and I'm squinting. And I told him it's 50, 50 buster. I'm going to, I'm going to guess which guy. And he's like, you've got to be kidding me. I'm like, no, no, I'm, I'm not kidding you. I, 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 I really have this problem. And then I went and saw an eye doctor and he was like, yeah, you have a water bubble on your right. eye." like, I don't even know how you were, your depth perception was working. And I'm like, well, that's muscle memory for you, I guess. <laughs> so, oh, I, I, uh, I'm blown away by this train. I, I remember Jake Peavy couldn't see. They had to like, they remember Peavy's fingernails because Peavy'd have trouble seeing sometimes. But this water bubbles is a different story. All right. Uh, yeah. Give me a story of Buster Posey behind the scenes. Nobody would appreciate unless you know Buster, either as a person, as a teammate, whatever you got. Uh, man, you know, what a, a, he had so many uh, uh, situations, but, you know, I just think the empathy, like people, you know, we're baseball players. We have, 
you know, you know, we're trying to be tough. We're trying to be mentally tough and mentally strong, but he had a lot of empathy and, and to see, you know, if I had a bad game or some guy had a bad game, he would sit with you. He would, he would sit with you after the game and he'd be like, man, how you feeling? Like, I'm sorry, man. Like, he would come in sometimes he would come in early and even even watch video uh with you but he he did not like when his pitchers didn't do well and when they were struggling he he just felt he felt for you uh you know a lot of catchers are like hey man it's the game part of it suck it up next guy but no he really did feel for you and he knew how much we passion we put into that game and when it didn't go our way you know even even if we won the game and he could have hit two homers that game. He could have went two for four. Caught if you had the bad game as a pitcher, like he'd sit, he'd walk over and sit with you, and, and he'd say, "How you feeling, man? I, I know you're frustrated, but I just want to let you know we're going to get through it." And and we, I, I saw your stuff. I got some ideas for you, but let's sleep on it tonight and talk tomorrow. And uh, I, I just really appreciated that about him, the empathy he had for for pitchers and when when they didn't perform real well. Empathy and compassion. It's in short supply in the world today, so it's great to know Buster Posey was able to have that, not only in the diamond, but I'm sure now in life. Jeremy Affelt, dude, these stories were unbelievable. Look forward to chatting again soon. I appreciate you. Yeah, absolutely. World Series champion Jeremy Affelt talking about Buster Posey. Look at that great image there as the San Francisco Giants World Series champions, and obviously Buster Posey will be missed.